Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are uh, you? I'm fine, thank you. So, uh, Aparna, tell me, where are you from? What city do you belong to? Yeah, I belong to Kolkata. I'm from Kolkata. Kolkata, all right. So, how would you describe the city of Kolkata? Oh, <laughs> Kolkata uh, is a busy city. And uh, the roads are always congested whenever I see. And uh, it's a beautiful city, though. Uh, like, there are many places to, uh, to visit. And one, uh, one thing that I love about Kolkata is that uh, there are many, uh, not many, maybe, but uh, there are few uh, temples. Uh, and uh, you know uh, the uh, you can you can uh, see a lot of uh, Vaishnav people. I mean the people who are devotee of uh, Sri Radha Krishna. So that I love about Kolkata. So Kolkata is known as the city of joy. So why is this city called the city of joy? Because there are many festivals. Uh, you know. Uh, there, uh, I mean, the people are uh, very uh, cheerful and, uh, you know, they love to uh, enjoy uh, and celebrate the festivals. So that's why they love to be joyful all the time and mainly in the festivals. So maybe that's the reason. So are you always joyful? Are you always happy when, when you're in Kolkata? Yes, yes. I try to be joyful, but at times I also get... Uh, uh, I also get stressed, but that is very, uh, by the grace of uh, my Lord, that is very uh, uh, fewer times. That that happens very fewer times, but uh, most of the time I try to be joyful and cheerful. Okay. So now, what are some job opportunities uh, that somebody could find in Kolkata? Sorry, I didn't get. What are the what job are some opportunities? Joy job opportunities if somebody was looking for a job what kind of a hmm. job would you find in Kolkata? okay uh that depends uh, on the uh, on the person's priority maybe job opportunity if i talk about then uh, uh, i think uh, the job opportun opportunities for mainly for uh, engineers as i am i i am from that field i could say about that that is better uh, far better in other cities uh, in comparison with kolkata uh, like uh, in bangalore or in gurgaon i have uh, there are more opportunities here also there are opportunities but uh, the opportunities are less in kolkata okay. job so opportunity what, so what kind of an engineer are you I'm a computer engineer, software. I, I work in IT company. Okay, great. So why did you join the IT industry? Why didn't you join any other industry? Why IT in particular? It's just, uh, it just happened. I mean, engineering was something that uh, um, means I just... Uh, like I uh, after my after completing my secondary examination, I took science. So they were uh, two uh, you know choices mainly. Uh, I mean, be, my my parents would tell me that uh, you have to become doctor or engineers. So I couldn't be uh, fit for doctor because I was not that good in uh, studies. So I took engineering, and after engineering, you know, you got this placements and all. And so that's why, uh, you, you know, after getting into that field, I uh, I uh, started developing interest in that. But if I talk about earlier, I didn't have any interest in this. But now I could say that I have interest. Uh, and uh, but why I cho I have chosen it, I would say that this was not a uh, not a conscious decision. But it just happened. It just happened like that. Okay, great. So, Aparna, are you happy with the way your career is progressing at this moment? Uh, yes, but not fully. I want to uh, excel it, uh, but 
yeah i want to excel it but yeah the the way it's progressing i think uh, it's it's fine i'm I satisfied want excel, i want to excel in it not i want to excel it oh right? i i want to excel in it okay yeah so exactly use your prepositions properly your omitting words from your sentences right yes so yes generally if you omit one set of words prepositions you might be omitting linking verbs and uh, articles also from your sentences so please make mm. sure that you use all of these words articles prepositions and the linking verbs as well right yes yes okay now uh, tell me um, how do you see the field of uh, journalism field of journalism what is your opinion about this uh i think um it it requires to be very, uh, uh to be um, one minute i mean it requires to be um extrovert and uh, not talkative but you have to be very um, you know uh, very prompt with your thoughts and uh, with your uh, uh, actions as well sometimes so you have to be a prompt yeah all right okay great now aparna how important is it to have uh, law in the country how important is law and order in any country very important very very how important, important. Uh, i think uh, if the law will not be there then the li- uh, the people uh, will not be uh, scared of doing something bad or wrong so it actually makes uh, them uh, how should i say this means if you actually uh, frighten discipline in people i think law and order instills discipline in people right instills discipline in people right 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 exactly uh, yeah it makes makes people disciplined aparna um, tell me if there was no law in kolkata for Three days. What would you do in those three days? If for three that, days. If you knew that there was no law and order in Kolkata for three days, what would you do? What could I do? Means, uh, in terms of what? Means, if I want to do something uh, against you'd law. You would obviously, you would obviously do something against the law because you you would know that you know there's no law and order and nobody's going to stop you from doing anything wrong. so what would you do right for example if i knew that there if i lived i live in jaipur rajasthan right oh so okay if i know that there's no law and order for 3 days i'll just go to my local bank and ask them to give me you know maybe 3 to 4 lakhs cash and just put it into my account and walk back home nicely because i know that there's no law and order and nobody's going to question me right so i would wow. do something like this so tell me what would you do sense of law and order for three days um what would you do in kolkata you have to be a little imaginative i believe to answer this question right yes yes uh actually another uh, there was another session where i was maybe the tutor was asking me this kind of a question but uh, actually i i don't want to uh, break the law i don't want to go against law even if they are uh, actually giving me the opportunity to uh, to break it maybe but uh, yeah it's not it's something different but it's not maybe uh, under law and order but if there is no law in temples i would do i would just go to the you know uh, the room where the uh, dts are there nobody is uh, you know uh, nobody is uh, i mean nobody they will not allow you. you right yeah no uh, they 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 don't allow you the pandits and all who are there they won't <coughs> allow you to uh, enter the uh, that room where the dts are there so right. i would just break that rule and i would love to go <laughs> enter that room and touch the dts maybe <laughs> so which temple would you like to go to if you are allowed this privilege I I would like to go to uh, actually I have got initiation from Vrindavan so I would like to go to in Vrindavan Radha Vallabh Temple. 
That is the yeah. So you got an invitation to go there. No, no, I didn't get any invitation. I I said that that I got initiation from Vrindavan. So. Okay, okay. So um, you'd like to go there basically, right? Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, I would love to go, and I would love to enter that room where the DT, my DT is, uh, you know, uh, standing, standing. DT is there, and uh, I would uh, love to touch uh, the DT. But I, I, uh, I. So if they, they would be on it, in, uh, there won't be any law in that mandir, and they would allow us to do that. Then I would love to do. But otherwise, I don't think that if there is no law. uh i mean they just uh, there's no law and order uh, uh for three days then i i don't think that i would do any kind of uh, thing which is against law i mean i i i don't have any interest to do that <laughs> so you would be a law abiding citizen for three days in spite of there being no uh, restrictions on law and order for three days right yes because there, there's no requirement for me to uh, break it i think oh Great. Now, uh, tell me, Aparna, are you a religious person? Yes, yes, I am. So, how religious are you? Do you uh, do you keep on fasting? Do you keep on praying throughout the day? Uh, how do you practice your religious beliefs? I don't uh, fast at all. <laughs> uh, I I just have prasad. Means whenever I have. food my food is uh, in the form of prasad only means i offer food to my deities and then i have it and uh, as uh, the religious practices uh, as far as the religious practices are concerned i think there are a lot of uh, practices in our uh, our uh, genre how do i say this means genre you won't say genre if you could say in our region or uh, in your uh, particular uh, belief right believe yeah believe right. yeah so there are uh, many like uh, uh, chanting the name of lord that is the main thing in in uh, any vaishnava uh, i mean who wears the tilak and tulsi mala they they call the they call as vaishnav so all the vaishnav has this uh, uh, this particular thing in common uh, which is very important which consider to be the very important the most important thing to chant the name of lord and then the service as a service of god to uh, to do service of god the deities and the whole world as i mean you uh, the devotees should consider the whole world world as their uh, as their uh, lord and they should give service to all of them i mean all this uh, all all the people around you know your family and all the people and uh, Uh, reading the scriptures that is also a part of your uh, uh, devotional practice i mean our de- devotional practice reading scriptures and to get to know about lord and lords uh, the, the uh, got to get to na- know about ourselves so those are the things that uh, we generally practice okay great so um, for now i think time is up for today's session right Yes, so yes. I just make one or two recommendations to you. Top yes, most, please. of course, is uh, fluency. You need to work on your fluency. But now you are a very good speaker, but you get lost while speaking. I think yes, forming yes. sentences is your biggest issue, right? Biggest now, issue. Biggest this issue. This is surprising because you have a good control over the language. So this is what I'm surprised at. It's not that you don't know how to speak the language, right? but somehow you always get lost in your thoughts you are not able to organize your thoughts right? yeah then how to fix it this is the biggest problem absolutely absolutely so you you know i believe uh, you should uh, speak english as much as possible all right if you have people speak as kolkata, much as possible yes if you have people in kolkata who you can practice english with in your office or whatever you do they speak it, english with them and if this is not possible right mm-hmm. now uh, it's very easy just take a very separate topic every day and speak eight to 10 sentences aloud on that topic right? okay for example okay. kolkata could be one topic right mm-hmm. if you are mm-hmm. working your profession could be the second topic your family could be the third topic your best friend could be the fourth topic so just choose a very simple topic which is related to your life and speak 
8 to 10 sentences allowed on that every day. Okay. Right? Okay. But keep in mind that you need to change your topic every day. Don't be repetitive. Don't speak on the same topic. Because if you keep on doing this, you'll end up uh, saying the same things over and over again. Over and over again. Right, right. So use a new topic every day and practice speaking for at least uh, 7 to 8 minutes or 10 minutes. Practice speaking at least 10 sentences and record your conversation on the mobile and listen to it. Right? 